stuff, where I need to go, who I need to call, is actually kind of meaningless if you don't have a, a background, a kind of mindset uh, before you uh, kind of get into all this uh, college stuff, this education stuff. So I guess I'm going to share some advice with you guys first before I get into all the other stuff. Uh, I'm also going to ask you to bear with me because I have a really bad cough. So I'm going to tell you guys the same thing that I tell my kids every time they leave for school. <clears throat> don't give up on me and I'm not going to give up on you. So uh, don't give up on me. I'll be, uh, I'll be uh, do the best I can. You want to click it? So uh, the first piece of advice that I'm going to give you is uh, to change your mindset. See, I, I dropped out of high school when I was 15. And I thought I had it all figured out. I was like, man, these teachers don't care about me. I had already gotten suspended three or four times. <clears throat> I got kicked out of Evergreen High School. And uh, I figured, hey, you know, the teachers don't believe in me. Uh, the statistics are against me. I'm a person of color. I came to this country when I was seven years old. I'm undocumented. I'm like, what do I got? Might as well just get to work. So I thought I had it all figured out. Uh, when I was 16, I had my first kid. And uh, my dad said, Te querías meter a la cama, ahora te pones a trabajar. We <laughs> wanted to get in bed with somebody, you better, get, you better get to work now. So I was 16 years old, and I got my first job. And I was like, this is, this is what I need to do, this is for me, man. I'm a good worker. And uh, people were saying, like, you're not a good student, but I was like, I'm a good worker. <clears throat> I have really good work ethic. So I started working, I moved up the ladder at the Elephant Car Wash in Burien, uh, which doesn't seem like much, but it was a lot to me because it was paying my bills. It was paying for everything I needed to get. I like getting the paychecks. I like working 60 hours a week. You know, I like having money. I was like, money, that's what I want to do. I want to have money. But it wasn't fulfilling. It was like something was missing. You know, I had to wake up every day, 6.30 in the morning, go to work, leave at 6.30 at night. Every day. And I was like, there has to be more to life than just this. I can't just wake up every day, go to work, and then come back. Like, that's not what life is supposed to be. So I talked to my parents. My dad made it to the sixth grade. He's like, this is what we do, we work. <clears throat> my mom made it to the ninth grade. She's like, this is what men like you do. Te quieres ser hombrecito? You want to be a man? Work. Nobody in my family made it to school. My grandparents didn't even attend school. To tell you the truth, they don't even speak Spanish. They speak Nahuatl. They speak native Spanish. It's native Mexican. It's Aztec. So I figured nobody in my family went to school. I don't need school. So I worked. Finally, one day, I woke up and I was like, man, I got a daughter now, and she's going to start going to school soon. And I was tired. I was like, man, I'm tired of this shit, man. Every Hey, can't be like this. When my daughter comes home from school and asks for my help, she needs to do her homework, what am I gonna tell her? Hey, go get a tutor. You know, I didn't make it through school, so go get a tutor. Her own dad is like not giving her help for school. I was like, nah, that's not me. So I decided to come to Karelian. Now obviously all of you that are here have gone through something in your life that makes you, you know, you're already tired. You came to Karelian because you were tired of Whatever it is that you were doing, you're like, I need to get an education. I don't want to be another statistic. So you guys can share that feeling with me. And I share that feeling with you as well. So I really hope that the advice that I'm going to give you right now goes in one ear, ear and doesn't come out the other. Because that's what I used to, you know, every time I used to hear somebody speak, it's like, let me just, let me just hear this thing. Let me, what, what time is it? Let me get out. And then it's over. But I really hope that it helps you because it helped me a lot. So, the next piece of advice I'm going to tell you is to become fearful. Come to school every day scared. And you better be scared or let, hey, you better be scared. <laughs> be scared of fail. You know what, because everybody's expecting you to fail. All the naysayers, man, you're not going to make it, dude. Nobody in your family make it. How are you going to make it? You got two kids. You got to work. You don't got time for school. I was so afraid that the naysayer was going to be right. I woke up every day. Day, wishing that one day I could be like you was wrong and that helped me a great a great deal <clears throat> let me tell you something don't let somebody else's reality about you 
become your truth. Let me tell you again, just in case you missed it. Don't let somebody else's reality about you become your truth. People have their minds made up about you already. Don't prove them right. You guys all got great potential. Everybody here has great potential. I sat there too. I didn't think I had great potential, but it worked out for me. And it's not because I got lucky, it's because I worked hard. The uh, next piece of advice I'm going to give you is to find your passion. So when I first started school at uh, South here, my, one of my first classes, one of the professors was like, hey David, what's your passion, man? And I thought about it and I was like, I want to make money. That's my passion. <clears throat> and she said, uh, David, how are you going to do that? And I said, uh, you know, ma'am, I'm not quite sure right now. And she just smiled and uh, went to the next person. But it kind of made me think, how am I going how, how, how to do that? How am I, I going to make money? So I went home that day and I got on Google and I was like, highest paying jobs in Washington State. Got Microsoft, Google, Amazon, engineering jobs. The next quarter I came to Molly and I said, hey Molly, sign me up with uh, computer coding with Robbie Gondam. I'm about to be a computer scientist. Oh, I remember. So uh, I took his class and uh, one thing was really clear after that class. I hate computer science. I couldn't sit in front of the damn screen and look out at little thingies for like four hours and get frustrated and I was like hitting answer and I'm like, man, this job's not for me. See, I, I already knew my passion. But I had let somebody else's reality become my truth. See, my passion was law enforcement. I got a ride along one day with uh, Officer Cameron Leffler, and it was the first time that I got to sit in the front seat rather than the back seat. And I was like, this job is for me. I want to do this. He introduced me to other officers, and I got to translate for some people. Man, you should have seen the look of desperation on those individuals when I was translating. It reminded me of my mama. You know, we don't call the police. We don't, we don't call the cops because we're undocumented. You do, you don't call the cops because you're going to get deported. You know, people are become vulnerable when these situations happen. But when they see somebody that looks like them come to their house, help them out, the look is, is just, it's rewarding, honestly. I'm going to tell you the truth. So, after that, I decided I'm not going to let somebody else's reality become my truth. I'm going to follow my passion. So when people would ask me, Hey, David, what are you going to do for your career? You know, I thought about it, and I was like, should I say you make money? <laughs> but I was like, nah. I'm going to be the best dead police officer Washington State has ever had. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it now, but it's working out, I'm telling you. So, at Seattle University, where I attend, where I attend now, I decided to do criminal justice. I've had some of the biggest opportunities that this country has ever offered anybody in my family. And I, I'm deciding that I'm going to take advantage of that. I was sitting in class two quarters ago with Chief of Police, uh, Chief of Police uh, O'Toole. And I was sitting there, and uh, everybody was introducing themselves. When like, a, couple, uh, a couple people went to introduce, introduce themselves, there was an individual that said, uh, my name is so-and-so, uh, I work for ICE, I'm an ICE agent. And I was like, oh crap. <laughs> the next person introduced himself and they were like, so-and-so, I work for the FBI. They're getting their master's degree. I was like, oh crap. <laughs> the next individual was Border Patrol. And I was like, it was coming closer to me and I was like, honestly, I was like, what the heck am I doing in here? But it was one of the best and most rewarding experiences that I've had because I got to talk to the Chief Police, or Chief of Police O'Toole and I got to present my ideas to her. She said, uh, your, what is your project going to be? And I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for strategies and ways to better serve the Hispanic community and the undocumented community, and I'm going to present that to you at the end of the quarter. She said, go for it. So we, we made a survey. I went out to the community. I asked questions. I asked individuals that I know questions. And at the end of the quarter, sure enough, I made a presentation about how we can better serve the Hispanic community. And I told myself, I shouldn't have asked what the heck I was doing here. It's like, what am I going to do that I have the opportunity to be here now? So just find your passion. The next uh, advice I'm going to give you is build your habits. Build good habits. Learn not to give yourself excuses. 
you know, all the time when I was coming to school, I was like, man, this is too much work. I can't do it. And I got to work. I got to work 50 hours a week. Man, I got two kids. What am I doing in school? But you see, I wasn't really telling myself the right questions is that I shouldn't have been, I should have never been asking those questions. I wasn't asking the right questions. And uh, all those excuses that I just gave you at one point in my life, I used all of them. But I told myself, you know what? I wasn't born, I wasn't born to be a nobody. So I stuck it through. I need you to see everything as a challenge. Every challenge is an opportunity. One of my biggest challenges is public speaking. I know it might not seem like it, but it, it is. I'm going to tell you a little story about uh, when I got the uh, Rotary, West Seattle Rotary Scholarship. It was one of my first major speeches that I made. I went uh, to the West Seattle Rotary, that nice restaurant with Molly, and uh, I was like, man, this is the fanciest food I've ever seen in my life. This is the fanciest we've ever had in my life. And uh, they were like, all right, you got to make your speech. And somehow I ended up being last. I was like, man, just my luck. Molly's like, hey, eat something. And I was like, no, I'm hella nervous. <laughs> She's like, drink something. And I was like, no, I'm going to start throwing up. <laughs> so uh, the first speaker went up there. And uh, she was like, man, this year I went to Italy and it changed my life. I'm a new person because of it. The next speaker said, hey, now, now that I uh, helped my family put a fifth bedroom on our uh, house, I know what work ethic is. And I was like, Ugh, what am I going to say? I went up there and I was like, my name's David. I dropped out when I was 15. I got a kid. I'm not going to tell you the whole speech, but <clears throat> I did get one very important thing out of, that, uh, out of that opportunity. All those individuals there have money. They're successful. And those people don't care about how you fall. They care about what you do when you're given the opportunity to get back up. That's all they care about. Ask anybody, anybody, anybody who you think is successful. They all had their mistakes, they all had their falls. But what they did with the opportunity to get back up is what matters, and that's what counts. So, when I left West Seattle Rory that day, my pockets were full, and it wasn't money. It was business cards. And I was like, man, what am I supposed to do with these things? It's just paper. But that brings me to my next point. No, that's, you went too far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, forget about it. Uh, anyway, my next, the next point is to build your list. <clears throat> you know, sometimes when you uh, get to meet individuals, you don't even know who they are. So I always tell myself, every person that I meet is important. Every one of you in here is important. The next person that you meet, might get you that much closer to your dream, whatever your dream may be. You guys think I'm bullcrapping? I brought a visual aid for you guys. So uh, I hang this on my wall every day. This card right here from Joe Wakefield was the first scholarship that I ever got for South. This was a scholarship that started it all for me for, for my college uh, degree. Now, Wendy, she brought a speaker one day for career choices. Uh, his name is Robert M. Williams. This is like an eight-year-old card, but I saved it because uh, I like the speech that he made. And I know one day when I make my millions, I'm going to call that guy and I'm going to say, hey, I need you to manage my money. <laughs> <laughs> I got the uh, Canadian police chief right here. He came to speak for us for one of the classes that we had. And I said, hey, I really like your speech. I would appreciate if we change cards. I gave him a card, he gave me his card. I sent him an email after, hey, just reminding you, this is David, I really appreciated what you did. He's like, hey man, anytime you need anything, just give me a call. I got the chief of police right here. I don't know if you guys heard the news that chief of police O'Toole so stepped down, so she's no longer the police chief. So I sent her an email on the day that I got the news and I said, hey, hey chief, I just wanted to say that, uh, thank you for everything that you did for me, all the advice that you gave me. Just wishing you uh, uh, good luck in your uh, future endeavors in Ireland. She says, hey David, you're one of the best students I've ever had. Here's my contact information. If I can ever help you with anything, call me. Build your list, because you never know who you're talking to. And honestly, I can honestly tell you that the only way that I made it to Seattle U is with the connections that I made. Today before I leave, I'm gonna give you a, a card with my information on it, so I can help you build your list. 
I may not have the answer for you, but I might know somebody that has the answer for you. And I really want you guys to take advantage of it. Just don't be texting me in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the last pieces of guys, advice I'm going to give you is to be ready to embrace your dream. Now, I, I heard somebody one day say, some people don't succeed because they're afraid to succeed. They're like, what if I make it and I'm not smart enough? Man, what if I make it and I'm not strong enough? I don't have anything against asking questions, but ask yourself the right questions. What am I doing right now to make sure that I get to where I need to be tomorrow? What am I doing right now? Not yesterday, not tomorrow, not the next day, not the next hour. What am I doing right now? Because I'm going to tell you right now that whenever I ask myself that question, if the question is nothing, if the answer is nothing, then I I'm messing up. So always ask yourself those questions. What am I willing to sacrifice to, to get where I need to be? You know, so, sometimes I think that it's hard for us to sacrifice the things that we like, whether it's like social media, getting on them like funny YouTube videos, like whatever it is that makes you tick, it's hard to give that stuff up. I'm gonna tell you right now that I gave up one of the most precious things that I could ever hold, and that's time with my kids. Because the only reason I, was, I, I made it here is by going to night school, doing online classes, working two or three jobs. I had a sacrifice because I knew that I wasn't going to let myself down and I wasn't going to let any, everybody else down that depended on me. And I sure as hell wasn't going to let the naysayers be like, you were right. So just know that. So the last part is what I was supposed to come here and talk to you about is the resources. This is going to be the shortest one because like I said, this is all meaningless if you don't have this background information. So the first thing that you need to do is identify your needs. Do you need help improving in writing? Do you need help improving in math? Do you not have money for school? Like what is it? I mean, I had all three, but there's always people that can help you. You're already paying for school. Just being here is, it already gives you rights. It already gives you resources. I know all you guys know about the writing center. There's the math labs, there's tutors, there's, there's people that can help you in all ways. Always be prepared to give your, if you guys have a personal letter that you guys already wrote, always have that on deck. You know, when somebody calls you and says, hey, there's an opportunity for a scholarship, I'm like, where do, I, where do I send my stuff? The next five minutes, my stuff is there. I want to be the first on your list. I want to get your money. <laughs> I need to get your money because otherwise I'm not going to go to school. So always be ready. Always have that on point. So if you guys take anything away from this conversation, honestly, don't give up. Because a lot of people are already expecting you to give up. Especially if you're a person of color. I'm going to tell you right now. People are expecting you to lose. You're, the statistics are stacked against you. You drop out, they're just going to be like, oh, it's just, another, it's just another drop out. That's just the way it is. Don't let them be right. And, you know, I, I always think about... Like, what if I don't finish? What if I just, I've already been far enough. Like, what more do they want from me? And the whole thing that comes to mind is that my parents immigrated here. They crossed the border. They went through some badass pain. My grandfather died a couple years ago, and my parents weren't able to go bury him. And I was like, it would be a spit in the face to them if I decided to waste the opportunity that I'm getting right now. How the hell am I going to tell my grandpa when I get to heaven, hey, my bad. I didn't make it. Nah, that's not going to be me. And I don't want that to be you either. So, I believe that all of you are going to make it. And I hope that you do. If I can help you with any of that, please feel free, uh, free to reach me. Uh, and if you guys have any questions, I can take questions now. No questions? Remember what I said about asking questions? <laughs> so this is my last quarter at uh, SU. And you want to be a police officer? Yes, so one of the requirements for being a police officer is to be a U.S. citizen. And, and so I, I, I figured I can't do that right now. One of my friends yesterday sent me a video about uh, a person who was interviewed in Illinois. He's the first uh, police officer in the United States with uh, DACA. That's what I, I have right now. And so uh, I'm going to find Officer Martinez, and I'm going to ask him how he did it. And obviously, like I said, it always works out for me because I, I don't give up. I always try. I'll find a way. And so... I'm planning to do that.
Any other questions? Yes. Um, do you have any goals, like once you, like once you do become a police officer, and have like, long-term goals for you? Yeah. You know, I always say like, if you're gonna like dream, dream big, or don't dream at all. Right. Like one of my biggest dreams is to become either the King County Police, uh, uh, the sheriff, or the Seattle Police Department uh, chief. Uh, and I know I'm gonna get there. I just don't know when. I know I'm gonna get there because I grind every day. You know, like I grind every day. I want to make sure that I meet somebody new every day that's going to help me get to where I need to go, and it's worked out for me so far. I mean, this is my last quarter. Look, the statistics are stacked against me. I'm undocumented. I'm a father. I'm a person of color. English is my second language, but uh, none of that matters. It's just you got to grind every day. So hopefully one of those goals comes true. Anybody else? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I took a, a police and society class, and they asked me almost that similar question. And my professor looked at me and he said, uh, David, you got the wrong profession, dude. He's like, if you want to be a hero, you got to become a firefighter. He's like, people hate cops. He's like, especially brown cops like you, he's like, it's going to be a sellout. And I'm like, you know what? Every time somebody tells me that or, or questions that, I remember that lady that I went to go translate for. And I remember my parents. I remember telling me, you know, anything happens. You know, I was I was a little kid and I was scared because there was like people fighting outside, people drinking, throwing beer bottles by my window, and I'm like, if I can be that police officer that goes to that house and shows that little kid that people like us can go up there too, then I already done my job. So I feel like if you stand for honestly anything good in the world, I think it'll pay pay itself back. I think more than that, like honesty, honor. Courage and commitment. You know what I mean? Like, just like not everybody makes it, but I'm going to be the one who's going to make it. Molly. Will you just talk about, because you were very successful at CareerLink and at South and then at Seattle U, um, how you managed your time, because you had a lot going on and that was a lot to balance. So, do you have any strategies for a lot of people have to work and their parents? So, how did yeah. you do that? I mean, honestly, the, the honest answer to this is uh, I, I didn't sleep very much. <laughs> and and also, I can tell you that I, I made a calendar and I had all my stuff planned out, but I didn't. Uh, I started work at 6.30, 7 in the morning. Uh, I would come to Kareli at 12. Uh, I would leave at 3.30 or 3.45, whatever it was, and I would go back to work till 6.30 or 7. After that, I would go home, do my homework, finish at about 9 or 10, and if I did it, then I would kiss my kids goodnight and I would stay there sometimes. I'll tell you right now, my wife found me sleeping on the kitchen table like 20,000 times. You know, like I would just pass out. Uh, when I went to Seattle U, uh, this past quarter, they overloaded me because of, the, of the, the schedule that they had and they told me, hey, you, you better get used to uh, uh, that your grades are gonna be pretty low because you're taking 20 credits and you're gonna have to manage your time because for every one class, they say that you gotta take either five to seven hours of outside time. So uh, for my finals last quarter, I didn't sleep for three days. But you know what? I'm gonna tell you right now that I want it so bad, I'm gonna I'm die trying. Because uh, they didn't give that opportunity to anybody that I know, you know? So I'm not gonna waste it. Uh, so if, if anything, honestly, like time management is a huge thing, but if you don't have time, you just gotta get it, like wherever you can. You, you're at work, I don't know, read a book, uh, do your homework. <laughs> you go to the bathroom, <laughs> download your PDF file and read it there. I, I, I don't care whatever it is, you gotta find ways, you gotta find ways to get it because uh, like there's no freebies out here and uh, you, you gotta just get it yourself. So I don't know if that answers your question, but it, it kind of, you didn't. It, that's just what worked for me. Yeah, no, you had really good time management and you never missed a day. I think in your whole time at CareerLink, I'm not sure you missed one day of school. Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't. Uh, and I think that honestly, uh, like I like I said, like I wanted so bad, I was gonna uh, email Susan today and be like, hey, I'm hella sick and I can't come speak. But uh, I never called in sick day in my life. So I was like, if this is the only opportunity I get to talk to you guys, and if only one of you guys makes it, that's gonna I'm, I'm gonna have my job done. So uh, honestly, like just just grind every day, every day, nonstop, till you die. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Go ahead. 